in the meantime, Tero says thank you and let's go over some more questions, Laura. Okay. Boom. Here we this. All right. <laughs> so we have a question from Jennifer Alisi. I'm probably not pronouncing the name right. We don't pronounce any name right. <laughs> so Jennifer asks, hey guys, I was wondering what are your top 10 places to visit would be in New Zealand? I will be traveling in May of next year and I can't decide where to go. Well, that's a pretty uh, pretty wild question. And to be fair, we do get uh, these kind of questions quite often. People are asking us, what's your favorite place? What's your favorite place? And it really changes all the time. It yeah. changes by like, you know, kind of how we feel. Um, so what we'll do is that we'll pick five places each that we really like and we'll tell you why. And uh, what we get do- the map we, out. Yeah, take the map so it's gonna be a bit easier. All right. All right. Uh, should I get started? Yeah, go for it. All right, so I'm going to get started with uh, literally the top of New Zealand, Cape Ringa. So Cape Ringa, all the way on top, is really an amazing place to visit in New Zealand because it's kind of an adventure. It's a whole day adventure. So usually you will start in the little town of Pahia, which is around right here, and you will take a bus or you can drive yourself, but we recommend taking the bus because there's so much things to do. You take the bus and go all the way on top. So you're going to be driving in between sand dunes. Literally, your bus will be driving on the beach. You will be able to go down sand dunes with bodyboards to do some sandboarding, which is absolutely epic. You try some amazing fish and chip. You learn about the local culture. You will see some amazing kauri trees, which are some gigantic New Zealand local trees. And you will learn about the Maori legends, which surrounds them, which is quite amazing. And then when you arrive on top, you have a really short, maybe 15 minute walk to a lighthouse, which is a lighthouse all the way on the top of New Zealand, which is quite stunning. And right there from the lighthouse, you will be able to see the Tasman Sea and the Pacific Ocean collide and meet. And on a good sunny day, you'll be able to see the green and the blue water kind of merging together and see really actually the two bodies of water combining, yeah. which is absolutely stunning. Then you have a long drive back where you're going to have a few pit stops as well. You're going to stop at the museum and have a few things and then you're back to Pahia. So it's a place which is really exceptional. It's really weird to visit both between the bus driving on the beach and, you know, uh, between the sandboarding. It's just there's just so much happening that I think is definitely one of the of the top things to do in New Zealand. Or at least just for this month until I'm being asked uh, this so question again. Yeah. yeah. So that's my first one. All right, on my list is Taranaki. Um, so Taranaki is uh, famous for its perfectly cone-shaped volcano right in the center of the region and surrounding it, it has the Egmont National Park. Um, what I love about this place is the forests there are absolutely amazing. Is the goblin forest? Yeah, so um, there's name names of certain like tracks, like walking trails and stuff, which really reflect what it feels like when you're walking through it. There's the goblin forest, there's the enchanted track, and it basically, it feels like you're in a fairy tale. You have loads of these, loads of really ancient, beautiful um, trees, all covered in moss. It just feels like yeah just very sort of surreal and stuff so just doing a few hikes in the Egmont National Park is absolutely amazing but also in that whole area as well it's very much like less visited by tourists so it really feels like it's the real New Zealand when you're traveling around from really small and quirky little New Zealand towns um, and yeah they all have their charms you can go and check out a place called Manaya which is a really cool town famous for its um, big sort of bakery factory over there and you can go and buy some really amazing yeah some really amazing baked goods and the whole town smells like bread it's really really cool um, <laughs> So, you can you can see what uh, Laura's priority. Are you done already? I like forests <laughs> and I like bread, and that is the place to go if you want forests and bread. All right. <laughs> All right. We're going back north a little bit, and we're going to Rotorua. 
So New Zealand is famous for its stunning landscape, but also for its absolutely amazing Maori culture. The Maori culture is a treasure to be cherished and New Zealand showcases its best in uh, the town of Rotorua. So um, you have a lot of amazing uh, evening tours that you can go and learn about the Maori culture. You get some amazing food, you get to visit some villages and everything. So there is Mitai and Tamaki. You can check out videos on our channel about everything that we mentioned actually, but all about those one as well, just like Maori culture uh, on the channel search box, box and you'll find that quite easily. So yeah, really awesome place to visit. And on top of that, if you are, have a little bit of extra time in Rotorua, there is some stunning uh, geothermal formation and geothermal park that you can check out, some geysers, some bubbling muds, all those kind of things. And if you feel like you want to pamper yourself and have even extra time, all these geothermal activities provide amazing places and, uh, and tools such as uh, rejuvenating mud um, <laughs> for you to be able to go to mud pools and all that and kind of feel refreshed for the rest of your trip. Yeah. So here you go, moving on. All right, another one on my list is Gisborne. Um, Gisborne is on the East Coast and it's famous for being one of the first city, well, for being the first city in the world to see the sunrise each day due to its position on the international dateline. Um, so what's really cool about this sort of this city, but this whole area as well, is that it has some amazing beaches uh, and it's again much quieter than the rest of New Zealand. It's um, off the, tour the main tourist trail, so you sort of again get to experience the real New Zealand. Um, and it's really awesome for surfing. It has loads of amazing vineyards. So you, if you're a bit of a foodie or a wino, there's lots of opportunities to go and yeah, do some wine tastings, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, I think that's about yeah. it. All right, so the next thing that I have is the Marlborough Sound. Uh, I really do like this area of New Zealand. This is kind of when you arrive, um, this is where you arrive in, <laughs> she got confused. Uh, this is where you arrive on the south and then when you take the ferry. It's a really stunning place where you have so many little uh, alcoves and then kind of uh, places. There's a ton of dolphins there. Sometimes they have orcas. Uh, there is a track called the Queen's Charlotte track, which is a multi-day track, which is really amazing. You can even mountain bike it. Um, there is a place called Lokmara where you can go check out stingrays and, and amazing bird life as well. There is a uh, little island, which is a bird sanctuary. Motu Oh, we always, we Mochuara, always. Well, I think it's Mochuara, but yeah. we always get it wrong. But yeah, um, you go there with a company called Beachcomber Cruise, and it's really awesome. You can also do the main run, which is this Beachcomber Cruise. They go with the boat from all the little alcove and resort around, and they kind of drop the mail, and you go along with them to check out all those places. It's an amazing cruise around the sound. So, yeah, so it's a stunning area that most people, they basically go from Wellington to Picton, and then they drive off straight away. Staying in Picton and exploring the area is amazing and you should definitely should do that. Yeah. All right. Um, next on my list is Fox Glacier, which is somewhere around here. Now, everyone sort of knows the glacier region more for Franz Joseph Glacier, but literally 20 minutes further down the road, you'll find um, Fox Glacier and the township, which is the same name called Fox Glacier Town. Um, and yeah, so this is where you can do an awesome sort of heli hike onto the glacier, which is a lot less sort of like, um, so on, in Franz Joseph Glacier, there's many different companies taking you up onto the glacier, but on Fox Glacier, there's only one company doing that. So it feels like you're just sort of alone on a glacier with the group of people that you're doing the tour with. So it's always really an amazing experience. And it's really famous also for having lots of caves to explore. Um, in the glacier as well. But that's not the only thing you can do there. You can also go to Lake Matheson, which is a super reflective lake, um, reflecting the Southern Alps within the lake itself, which is really awesome. And yeah, it's just a, it's just a nice, quiet little town. It, it has a pub there. We had a beer there um, on our travels. Um, it's, just, it's just a nice sort of, yeah, West Coast town. Yeah. And again, everything we're talking about right now, we have videos about it on this channel. We can see Laura and I actually doing that. So we're not just talk, we actually have done all those things. And if you want to know if it's your vibe, check out those videos. Yeah. Moving on, another place I really like it. This, this island right here, this, this little dot right at the bottom of the south island, it's called Stewart Island. It's mind blowing. Maybe we'll lift it oh, up yeah, just yeah, to show yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's really mind blowing. It's, uh, it's 
80 percent of it or 90 percent of it's a national park 80 percent 80 percent of the whole place is a national park so that, that, that's just amazing there is amazing walks to do there you can do some day walks but you can also do some like seven or eight or nine or ten days walk if you want to there is also a place called ulva island which is just right off up there so you take the ferry which costs about 10 i mean the ferry take a boat which <laughs> takes about a minute to go across yeah um and cost very little to to go through and uh and then in ulva island you have ton of native bird life and uh yeah it's quite amazing because the birds since it's the na national park the birds are not scared of you so they stick around you for the whole time it's it's really really weird it's like walking inside the enclosures of zoos uh, it's, it's quite quite amazing so yeah. Yeah, we really loved it and check out our videos we did a flight above it then we did a multi-day hike then we also did the ulva island we check out a really quirky little cinema with the silliest of all the movies yeah we carve um, our own jade necklaces yeah so that was quite cool we carve each other's uh, jade necklace rather than buying a souvenirs we actually carve it for each other so that's really awesome so here you go um that's my next one next yeah. one for you i think that's your last one um, no i don't one think... two three four five six seven we oh, have no. three more left yeah. all right Math is hard. so yeah so next on my list this isn't exactly accurate in the location but i'm picking doubtful sound so the I think it's this yeah one here. It, it's a little bit i actually low. think it's this one Isn't that okay? <laughs> um so doubtful sound is one of the amazing fjords of the fjordland national park and um, this whole area is an unesco world heritage area and most people have heard of milford sound but there is another really amazing and um, sort of well similar landscape you can go to which is less visited which is doubtful sound as you can see oh, the theme of my choices are which is slightly less visited than the other ones <laughs> um so yeah doubtful sound is like it's a full day commitment you do have to um, to get there, you need to travel across a lake, then take a bus journey through one of the most remote roads in New Zealand, and then only then do you get onto the cruise around Doubtful Sound, which lasts about three hours, and that's twice as long as what you can do in, in Milford Sound. But it means you're in that environment for much longer as yeah. well which is absolutely amazing and yeah the landscape is just incredible so yeah it's, it's mind-blowing it's really awesome yeah all right so for my last one i'm gonna pick akarora so akarora is a small little dubbed french town of new zealand but i'm not picking it because it's supposed to be french i'm picking it because it has amazing wildlife you can check out a place called pohatu penguins which are doing some conservation with little blue penguins and their tours are absolutely fantastic if there is one penguin tour you want to do check out pohatu penguins there is also many different ways to sail around the Hakara harbor from jet boat to sailing boat to a cruise boat and uh, yeah we try them all so check out the videos on this channel but once you do that you will be able to see one of the smallest dolphin in the world it's called the maui dolphin it's teeny tiny it's gray with some uh, black kind of uh, stripes and uh, how do you call this thing on top of the of the, of the... the mohawk yeah <laughs> i don't know damn i feel illiterate <laughs> anyway it's it's black and it's round it looks like a mickey ear oh, on do top dorsal, dorsal fin. fin yes a black dorsal fin i mean they are the cutest thing in the world and they're always hanging out there the water is a milky blue it's so stunning it's seriously an amazing place to visit there is also an alpaca farm which is hilarious alpacas are fantastic and uh, there is a rhino walk where you can walk and see some sculptures there's really hips to do there and it's although it's a really popular tourist place because some crews are going there it's still not that busy so it's definitely worth visiting I think it's going to be one you pick. pretty tough to pick a last one. I was going to pick Kaikoura, but I feel that's a little bit too close to Akaroa. Why not? Why not? It has, it has the whales and everything. Yeah. If you like it, go for it. I do like it. Okay. And it's my favorite activity in New Zealand to do there. So Yeah, so Kaikoura is famous mostly for its marine wildlife. And um, it just off the shore is something called the Kaikoura Trench, which is a big ocean trench full of nutrients, which attracts sperm whales it attracts here's laura tenderu for you <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> it attracts um, yeah, attract sperm whales where you can actually see sperm whales there all year round. It's not a seasonal activity. They just like to hang out there. And um, there's also huge pods of dusky dolphins, which are known for being super acrobatic. There's also an amazing array of large birds, like large seabirds, like albatross. And there's some fantastic tours where you can go out on a boat and actually get real close to these birds, which you actually don't realize how sort of majestic they look. And how big they actually are. I it's know, crazy, yeah. yeah. So, so there's that as well. But also, as Robin mentioned, his favorite activity is there, which is swimming with seals. Now, in New Zealand, you do see seals quite a lot on the coast, but they're usually a little bit, you know, apprehensive about humans. They don't like to be too close to humans. They usually either run at you or run away if you get too close. But in the water, it is completely different. They are super inquisitive. They come and play with you in the water and it's just incredibly cute and incredibly amazing. So yeah, that's Kaikoura. All right, here you go. So that's our current, as of this December, <laughs> favorite 10 places in New Zealand. This changes all the time just because, you know, what we feel like doing changes all the time. And it's really hard to pick. There's so many amazing places to visit. Yeah. If you want to learn more about each of those places and each of those things, you can check out videos on this channel where we've done every activities we talked about. You can also check out nzpocketguides.com where we actually have written um, all the articles about all those things, all those places to give you even more tips, places where you should stay, why you should go there, more activity than what we mentioned. It's basically like way more info than what we can give you right here while talking. But yeah, so it's nzpocketguide.com. And if you did find this video useful, make sure to hit like. That's a great way to say thank you for all our hard work and to subscribe if you're new around here. In the meantime, I'll go back to the live chat.